Hello everyone, today I'm going to teach you how to make amazing thumbnails using the latest version of Adobe Photoshop. I'll be using a background from a map I played in Osu, which is a music video game that has over 30 million monthly active users. I'm personally a big fan of the game, and while this video is most relevant to Osu players, all of the concepts in this video can be used to make good thumbnails for any game, context, or situation imaginable. If you don't have a copy of Adobe Photoshop, you can use photop.com, an amazing online photo editing tool which is completely free and replicates 90% of Photoshop's functionality flawlessly. You can even import photoshop.psd files into this website, meaning if you had previous projects from an old subscription, you can still edit those as well. So let's get started with the tutorial. First things first, you should think about what you want your thumbnail to look like. You should have a general idea of what you're going to put where and what effects you want to use. And it could also help to write down your ideas in a notepad document so you don't forget them. Don't forget to save that document either, as you don't want to lose your ideas because you accidentally pressed that red X button. So after that, you want to open Photoshop and create a new file. Alright, now that it's finished loading, I'm going to press new file in the top left. I'm going to do 2560 by 1440 because that's my monitor's resolution and it's in 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is the aspect ratio of YouTube thumbnails. So I'm going to click create and it's going to make this blank file with a white background layer which is locked. So now what we need to do is we need to drag in the background image we'll be editing with. Alright, so I have the image and I'm going to just hold left click, alt tab and then let go. And after a bit of loading it will copy it in and it will look quite small, but don't worry. The resolution will be fine, so I'm going to snap it to the top left, and then drag this until it snaps to the bottom right. Then that's good, I'm going to press the tick in the top middle up here, and then I can drag this background layer to the trash. Or, you can just click on it and then press the trash button, either way works. So now that we have this layer here, I'm going to duplicate it twice with Control J on my keyboard. This layer is going to be for blur, and this layer is going to be for subject selection or subject masking. For this layer, let's turn this off so we can see what it looks like, I'm going to do filter, blur, you can do motion blur, radial blur, or even Gaussian blur, but I think motion blur looks the best. And I try to do it in the direction that the subject or subjects are looking. I might just stick between 5 and 15, which is the range I normally use, and then do 200. That's the number of pixels I normally blur by. And you can see before, after, before, after. So I think this blur looks fine. But let's turn this off for now. And then we can start subject selection on this layer. So I'm going to press W to go to the Quick Selection tool. You can also use Object Selection tool, Magic Wand tool, press L to go to Lasso or Magnetic Lasso, or you can go to P on your keyboard and use the Pen tool. Any of these tools work just as well as each other. So I'm going to use the Quick Selection tool, I find this to be the easiest to use. I'm going to hold Alt and scroll to zoom in, and then I'm going to get started with selecting. Also a tip here, if you want to add to this Quick Selection, you hold Shift, so it's a plus in the middle, and then you start dragging again. That's how that works. Also, if you want to subtract from the selection, you hold Alt and then you drag, and that will remove the selection you've accidentally made. Alright, so now I've made most of the selection, I just have to go and edit it by holding Alt and then dragging to the left or right to change the diameter, and then I can get into these smaller bits, which I couldn't fit into before. And I might switch to the lasso tool here just to get some of these curves, which are subject selection tool, can't seem to get in. Make sure you don't forget little bits in the hair here, for example. It's very easy to leave these and not check them, so make sure you get rid of little gaps in the hair here like this. I'm going to try to use the magnetic lasso tool for this one, it seems like it'll work pretty well. Unfortunately, it's a lot of lassoing with this one to get those like precise details and make sure it's not looking too bad. You don't have to get it too precise because even though this is in 1440p, most YouTube thumbnails will only be rendering at 360p, maybe 480 if you're using a TV with a very high resolution like 4K. But other than that, you should be fine. So don't worry too much about getting the details perfect, just get them good enough.
stuff. So we'll know if it actually looks good because we'll press this button down here, the rectangle with the square, and that'll make a mask of our selection. And then when we turn this off, turn this back on, and it looks pretty good. I'm not seeing any missing detail. Okay, cool. So now that we've done the subject selection, I'll turn this back on. Backgrounds below, but the subjects are not. Now I'm gonna add some effects to this top layer, the subjects. So double click to open the layer styles menu. And I'm gonna use outer glow, most importantly. And I'm gonna use a spread of 50 with a size of 64. So spread is just how solid the glow is. So I'm gonna turn this down to 50 because this just looks like stroke and we don't want that look. We want a nice soft glow look and I'm gonna use 64 pixels. When I go for um, values in general, I try to use either multiples of five or powers of two. And so I've come to 64 as the best number for this specific effect. And I'm also gonna add inner glow, but I'm not gonna use normal like this one. I'm gonna use overlay. Instead of just making the pixels white, it makes the pixels underneath lighter. It doesn't make them fully white. So this gives it a nice shine, makes the lights look brighter without making them completely white. It looks very nice. 24 looks quite good, so I'm gonna stick with that. And that's it for this layer. Now I'm gonna add some text. So I'm gonna click off that layer, press T on my keyboard, and I'm going to type. So I scored 490 performance points or PP when I played this map. So I'm gonna put that. Press V to go to the move tool, and I'm going to center this. And now I'm going to double click on this text element here. And I'm gonna add drop shadow. That's the most important so that it becomes distinct from the background and you can read it easier. So for these values, normal blend mode, 100% opacity, 90 degree angle, so straight underneath, 32 pixels away distance, uh, spreads out 32%, and a size of 32, size of self-explanatory. How big is the shadow? And now I'm gonna add a gradient overlay. So I've already got one here. I chose a red and white color to fit the Christmas theme of this image. So you can click here. If you're struggling for gradients, try to use one of these presets here. They often look very nice and there's almost always one that fits. However, with this one, that really wasn't. So I had to just make do. I used pure white for this one and a uh, red pink color for this one. So those are the values if you wanna use those. And then I can press okay. And now we can add inner glow, which is the last one. But instead of using overlay, which looks kind of cool, but it's not very visible on the darker colors, the reds here. So I'm gonna turn it to normal and now it's completely visible on all the colors. So I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. Anywhere between 1 20th and 1 10th of the font size is good. So between 20 and 40 pixels. A 20 looks nice, not too big. I might turn the opacity down. 60 looks pretty good. So I'm gonna do 60 for that. And then I'm gonna press okay. And then before I move it to where I want, I'm gonna rotate it by five degrees. It looks more natural, less uh, straight. Try to avoid like using straight lines in thumbnails if you can. So don't make motion blur completely horizontal or vertical. Don't make your text completely horizontal. It'll look a lot better if you just rotate things by just a few degrees, like five to 15. That's the range I normally use when I'm rotating things. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to click these arrows so I can click off this layer. And now I'm going to add a border. So I'll show you how to do that right now. I'm gonna press U to go to the rectangle tool over here. I'm going to draw a rectangle, any size. Then I'm going to snap it to the top left and resize so it snaps to the bottom right, just like how we do with the image. Then in transform up here, make sure this is unlinked. Press end when you click in the field and then minus 100 PX. Make sure it's PX, otherwise it'll go a bit too small. And then I'm going to press tab and minus 100 PX, enter. And then press the tick on that one because it's already centered for me. And then I can double click on this and use an inner shadow effect. So I have this here. I'm going to use these settings which I already have. Distance of zero because we don't want it moving. We want it to be equal on all sides choke of 40% and a size of 80%. And I think this looks quite nice. So I'm gonna press okay. And now the last thing we can do is uh, camera raw filtering and color grading. So if I press alt and then press the bottom eye, it will disable everything but the bottom layer. Then I can go here and press control shift A or do filter camera raw filter in this menu up here. And now we have this window here. So first tab here is the basic tab. I normally only touch six of the sliders here. Temperature, tint, exposure, contrast, vibrance, and saturation. Normally I avoid using tint and exposure if I don't have to. Normally I avoid using tint because it just doesn't apply the right effects that I want. I don't want it to look red. I want the warmer colors to come out like orange and yellows, uh, not the reds, because the reds are already vibrant enough in my opinion. So I'm gonna change the temperature, uh, not too high because that's too bright. Maybe something like a uh, plus 30 is quite nice here. I like that. Exposure, I don't think I need the image much brighter. I might turn it down just a little, minus 20, minus 0.20, sorry. A contrast, I normally turn all the way up, but this is a bit too much, so I'm going to go plus 50, that's good. So then you can change these if you want. I personally don't, because if you change them too much, sometimes it'll cause artifacts and the JPEG compression to come through, and I don't really want that. Even though they won't be visible, 
Um, if you apply too many filters, they might become visible at higher scales, and that's not what you want. So I'm going to leave those three sliders alone and go to Vibrance, which I normally do plus 40, and that looks quite nice. And then go back to like 20 with saturation, and I think that looks very good. So here's the before, here's the after, a lot more vibrant and saturated, that's what we want. So now I'm going to go to the color grading, and I'm not going to mess around with midtones, I'm just going to do shadows and highlights. So shadows, I normally do a dark blue color, and highlights, I do a bright yellow color, and that seems to normally work. So if I drag this out, and I go around, it seems that dark blue shadows seem to look the most natural, maybe on the purple side a little bit, 240 on the H looks good. And turn this up, turn this down, nice 20, that looks quite good. And then highlights drag it around. Light yellow color seems to make it look the best. So I'm going to do 60 here. So I'm just going to leave it at zero for that. That seems to look the best. And then in either optics or effects, you can use vignetting. I'm going to use the one in optics because it has a very nice soft look. Here's before, here's after. Whereas the one in effects is very harsh, as you can see. Very big difference. I just want a soft vignette. So I'm going to press zero, turn that off. And now we're done. You can mess around with the other tabs if you like. I personally won't go through them as I think this is all you really need to make a great filter for your image. So press OK. You're going to hold Alt on your keyboard and drag this smart filter to the layer on top. You can see the thumbnail change. And then the masking layer, you can see the thumbnail change on that. Enable everything else. And you're done. I'm going to move this text down here. And then I'm going to press Control T. I'm just going to move it up like 100 pixels. And then end minus 100. It's very confusing, this one. Let's just see which one is right. And then press the tick. Gradient will reset itself. And then that's good. So that's your final thumbnail. So make sure you save this, actually. So on my computer. And then I've already made one. But I'm going to save it as Santa San V2. I'm going to export as right or alt Control shift w and then i'm going to make sure the quality is low enough so that the file size is under two megabytes because that's youtube's maximum file size for thumbnails so six 1.2 that's good i'm going to export that into my exports folder and i'm going to save it here save this again and then you're done let's take a look at our thumbnail in our exports folder there we go i think this looks very good that's it for the thumbnail then you can upload your video and upload the thumbnail with it and you're good to go. All right, that's it for this tutorial. Before this video ends, I want to give a huge shout out to all my inspirations for this video. The main one being Pix and Perfect. His videos on color grading, the camera raw filter, the layer effects, and other Photoshop tricks have contributed massively to the quality of my thumbnails, and a lot of the stuff I've learned has come from his amazing YouTube channel. And the videos of his I've used knowledge from will be linked in the description. I also want to thank White Cat and MREX thumbnail editors, as well as Dumb OC Thumbnails on Twitter, as their work has inspired me to be like them and make the best thumbnails on YouTube that I possibly can. And just remember, you're here forever, so make the most of it. See you next time. See you next time.